Hi there, this is Alana with Jamie, and you're listening to the Praying Christian Women podcast for another one of our COVID conversations. How's it going, Jamie? It's going. It is going well. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. How was your weekend? Anything fun or new or interesting? It was actually good. Um, I'm just finding myself doing things that I never would have done before, like our um, so our garbage disposal backed up, so it was yeah. clogged. Mm -hmm. And my husband was doing something. Um, we've been working on this bathroom project forever. So he was working on something in the bathroom project and I didn't want to bug him. And so I Googled how to fix it. Oh, and fancy, when the, fancy. oh my goodness. So when the baking soda and vinegar didn't work, I actually had to disassemble the drain. And oh. I thought I was just going to have to do the little trap and mm -hmm. not very much stuff came out of the trap. And so mm -hmm. I thought, well, I guess, you know, maybe it's okay. A little bit of stuff came out. So I okay. reassembled it, turned on the water and the garbage disposal, the entire thing. I guess I didn't make uh, the connection uh, tight enough. And so uh, the whole thing just blew under the sink. Thankfully, it wasn't as bad as it sounds, though. I okay. I had a big pan under there to catch everything. So it oh, was good. wet, but I had everything out of there anyway. So I had to disassemble the entire drain, both sides Whoa. of it. I had to flush it out and then put it all back together. And I mean, I was just holding my breath, waiting for it to explode again. And it didn't. It yeah. actually was working. Like, it's not leaking. Hey, cool. That's a good <laughs> feeling. You figured it out. It is. So I'm just feeling like, you know, super empowered. I've had a few times in my life where I have tackled something that I totally would never do. Right. And just felt like, yeah, this is awesome. It's, it's empowering. So I normally, we have a home warranty and mm -hmm. we have had lots of stuff go wrong with our house. And so it's been mm -hmm. a good investment. So normally I would just probably have either if Matt couldn't do it. Right. Um, just call someone just call in Call the or home something. warranty because it's, mm -hmm. yeah, it, it's not that expensive and they replace things that need to be replaced. But because of this COVID, you know, it's not like yeah. we're going to invite people in the house right. if we don't have to. So I was excited. I was like, wow, I actually fixed it now. That's really cool. Yesterday it was working fine. This morning it was working fine. I'm going to hope that it holds that it holds, but my husband could fix it if I did something wrong. I'm sure he could go in mm -hmm. there and, you know, tighten it up or do whatever needs right. to be done. Yeah, yeah. So that was my excitement for the weekend. How about That's you? That's actually really cool. It was a great weekend, to be totally honest. Like, good. We went, Scott and I went on a five mile walk yesterday, and then that was after lunch. Then after dinner, we all did like a mile and a half with the kids. So that was pretty cool. That's I want to work really up nice. to, yeah, I want to work up to like a seven mile or eight mile this summer. Um, you want to hear my really, really cool idea? Yes. Okay. So, you know, like what a walkathon is and you know that they have like, you know, all kinds of Fitbit step trackers. Like it's really, really easy to have an app that tracks how far you've walked. Mm -hmm. What I would think would be so cool. And I don't know how to make the app, but like to do, to kind of combine the two. So basically I could be like, Hey, Jamie, I'm going to walk 10 miles over the weekend. Do you want to sponsor me to support this organization? And like, it would all be in one little app. And I like, this is not something I've ever done before, but I'm like, if a hundred percent would mean like I'm all in and I'm going to figure out how to do this and 0% is like, Hey, that's a cool idea. I don't know how to do it. So I'm not going to like, I'm over 50%. With wow, this. Like, that's so I think cool. it would be so cool. Um, especially now where like you can't organize like a community walk, but it's going to be just as easy to walk on your own with the technology we have. So yeah. And you could do like crowdfunding type yeah, thing. Exactly. Yeah, I know. Like, so like, I'm virtual. Yeah. I'm a little bit excited about that, but it was really nice to get out. Um, what else did we do this weekend? Scott made us a really yummy seafood dinner. We had like shrimp and scallops. It was super fancy. Nice. So that was kind of fun. Yeah, he's he's trying out a few new kitcheny things because mm -hmm. he's been on the keto diet for like a little over a month. Like actually, I think he started it like the week of quarantine, like the week before quarantine started. So, mm -hmm. you know, going on two months. He's lost like 30, 35 pounds already. And so he's getting a couple just experimental things. Like, do you know what a spiralizer is? 
Is it the thing that makes zucchini noodles? Mm -hmm. Basically, yeah. We did it with a sweet potato. We got just this really big sweet potato, put it through the spiralizer, turned it into these like little, they look like curly fries. Yeah. And then we sauteed them up as like a pasta alternative. And it was really good. Like the kids were even asking for seconds of a wow. sweet potato. So, you know, things like that have been kind of fun. That is neat. I've had um, at a restaurant, uh, like last year, I had zucchini noodles and it was like an alfredo zucchini noodle mm -hmm. alfredo and oh it was so good and i thought to myself i want to get what is, is it just a hand crank thing or yeah you just kind of turn it and it's okay. sort of kind of like you know i think like the a lot apple an peeler. apple thingy yeah exactly that's yes. similar to what it is yeah in a former life i was a pampered chef consultant and so okay I mm -hmm. have the apple peeler core slicer. They don't just call yes. it a spiralizer. It's the apple peeler core okay. slicer. <laughs> I love it. I think I spiralizer it. has a better ring. It does. I wonder if, yeah, I mean, maybe if you got a small enough zucchini, you could just do it in that. Mm hmm Yeah. So, yeah, so that was fun. That's exciting. Yeah, I'm feeling better. Like this week we're back, the kids and I are kind of back to a more full homeschool schedule. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of figured like it's either that or we're going to be going all through the summer. And hopefully like if things are a little bit more relaxed mandate wise in the summer, I don't want to be having to focus on that. And yeah. so today's been our first morning of back to kind of full schedule. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah. How are they responding to that? Are they like ready to get back into it or are they not really, like, mm -hmm. but I mean, they're, yeah, I mean, they're, they're not complaining, but it's not like, yay. Right. <laughs> it's kind of like a, okay. And yeah. you know, that's good enough. They don't need to be jumping up and down excited. No, that, I mean, you know, yeah. School is school. They're not. Yeah. I mean, bad. at most it's going to be six weeks. It's probably going to be more like five weeks. So no biggie. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. you're in the home stretch now. For sure, for sure. We got my youngest this fun little app because he has a hard time staying on task and he also, he'll be like, he'll rush through things. So he'll be like, I'm done. Right. Like, mm, are you really? And so we got this app. It's called something like Epic Win or something like that. Mm -hmm. But he gets to pick this little monster avatar and we put every single like homeschool assignment and set it to repeat on weekdays. And then when he completes that one assignment, he gets to like, you know, tell the app that he did it and it gives him points. And I have no idea what the points do, but I'm sure he'll figure that out. That's so, fun. So it it's might like, be kind of a fun way to keep him on track. And yeah. Incentivize. Exactly. That's exactly. Cool. How are your kids doing? They're doing well. It's, we're kind of getting to the point where they are, my oldest ha is in middle school and they had like, they've been gradually adding on subjects. So um, mm -hmm. they've got all their subjects now. And so he doesn't have to go to office hours for all of his things. My younger ones need to go for some of the teaching mm -hmm, mm -hmm. for theirs more often, but he hasn't really been on Zoom with school as much. But mm -hmm. last week he decided, so two weeks ago, um, he said, you know what, I'm going to do this system where I do one subject a day. So mm -hmm. last week he chose to do one subject a day and math was left for Thursday and oh. they had been putting an assignment. And it was like in. a whole week's worth of math. Yeah. He was, he worked, I think it was Thursday. He worked from 10 AM to 10 PM, like oh off and goodness. on, like with just a few breaks and wow. was only like two thirds of the way done. Aww, so was he getting pretty frustrated and he was, stressed out? You know, not as much as I would thought. I, okay. I would well, have that's thought. good at least. Yeah. Because, mm -hmm. and I, I ended up helping him. He's like, yeah, I don't know how to do this. I don't, he doesn't like being out there either. He doesn't like putting himself out there and being on camera. So he didn't so want to go like into the office hours. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So the mm -hmm. cool thing was I actually started helping him a little bit yeah. and then Matt got home and started helping too. And I just realized how much I love math. I was never, really? mm -hmm. I was never like math was never my forte. Um, writing and language arts were always my higher scoring <laughs> stuff. And mm -hmm. I did okay in math, but like I needed a tutor when I got into pre-calculus mm -hmm. and um, just going back though and relearning algebra, there is something so therapeutic and maybe these days of uncertainty. Yeah. Cause math, it's never, 
there's no middle area. It's right no. or it's wrong. You do it exactly this way. See, I get into that when I look at like my spreadsheets for the business, like yeah, my book sales budgeting and, things. and Yeah. It's not something that really falls into my like sweet zone, but I do find it relaxing because there are no surprises. There's really no like no decisions to be made. Like two plus two is always going to be four and you don't have to weigh, well, should it be four and a half or should it be three and a half? So like, it's always going to be, it's very predictable. Yeah, It is. I, I loved it. And so I actually found myself doing some of the problems for him and I was like, wait, you have to do this, but I really <laughs> liked it. <laughs> oh, that's funny. See, yeah. our, our middle son is really advanced in math and he's getting to like the, the graphing and things like that, that like when I did them, I was fine. I was always a fine math student and, you know, above average, it just was never like, I love math. And so now I'm like, oh, I need to either figure this out, but he's actually pretty good about figuring it out on his own. Um, yeah. But yeah, I can see like when you know what you're doing, it, it does feel good. And when you yeah. don't know what you're doing, it's a little bit crazy. <laughs> I saw well, a hilarious meme. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say it was really neat that his teacher also said that if he ever has trouble that she will do like, uh, like right then and there, she'll do a, a Zoom one-on-one -on -one with him, which I Aww. thought was really cool because she asked how he was doing. Because she had to unlock like one of his tests. Um, and yeah. so she said, well, how's he doing? And I said, oh, I gave, told her this story that was kind of funny about mm -hmm. him waiting till the end to do all of right. it. And she said, if he ever needs like a one-on-one -on -one Zoom, just send me a note and I'll hop on. Like, That's immediately. really nice. Isn't that cool? Oh, good. Yeah. I saw a cute picture of a math teacher like standing on someone's porch through a screen with a whiteboard, <laughs> like doing one-on-one -on -one social distance tutoring. It was super cute. That but is cool. The meme I was going to tell you about, it's, it's just for fun, but it's got this, um, like a hand pushing someone's face against a chalkboard, you know, <laughs> and it says some of these, what is it? Some of these common core students are about to learn how to carry the one. <laughs> yes. Did you see the video I posted in the Praying Christian Women? I think I did it on the Facebook page and in the community, but it's this woman and she's like, uh, something about carrying the one it was just oh funny. no it was like just kind of a funny prayer and this woman is praying like uh -huh. you know talking about like the spirit of common core has descended on her home <laughs> i love it That's and hilarious. i'm about to carry the one i don't know it was funny we watched um we showed the kids the abbott and costello routine with math <laughs> have you seen that one no i have Do you know which it, one but i'm I talking about no but it's I just hilarious it's basically a way that they prove to their landlord that they only owe him like a few bucks in rent, even though it's supposed to be hundreds. And they do the math like all kinds of different ways, but they always make it make sense when you're watching. It's very fun. That is funny. That's very funny. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Speaking of on Friday night, Scott and I watched like a stand up comedy on Amazon Prime and it was really fun. Like it's not something we've ever done before. Like we'll watch comedy snippets if they show up on YouTube or things like that, but we've never sat and watched a whole show. It was fun. I really like um, Angela Johnson is a Christian stand-up comedian. Oh, okay. And she is hilarious. I, I have watched one or two of hers. Our, our former mm -hmm. pastor's wife introduced me to her, and she's really funny. I've watched Where a couple of Where do you find her videos? Just YouTube. Oh, okay. Yeah, you just search Angela Johnson, okay. and she's just got some funny stuff. Yeah, it's funny mm -hmm. stuff. That's cool. Well, you want to dive into our just for fun question? Yes. Okay. You get one free day. So for one day, let's call it tomorrow. Everything's open. Life is totally back to normal. There's not a shortage of anything, but you also know that like the day after tomorrow, things go exactly back to how they've been. Okay. Okay. So meaning you can go out and, and do You can anything. go out. Life is totally back to normal, but everybody knows that, and there's not going to be panic buying. So it's not like you're going to have to run to five different stores to find rice. <laughs> it's like for one day, things revert exactly to how they were on, let's say like January 15th. Okay. Okay. So I would go, so I would take the kids and we would, and, and my husband too, cause he doesn't like us to go without him. We would go to the extreme fun center in the Valley. Yeah, we yeah. love oh. that place. And they well, have, can we meet you there? we'll meet you there. <laughs> we'll meet you there. And mm -hmm. yeah, it is fun. So we'll, we would go, I think first we would stop at Starbucks or no, or Kaladi brothers, Kaladi brothers. Mm -hmm. I want to, I want to mm -hmm. support local. Sorry, Starbucks. Yep. <laughs> and we would sit in the cafe, mm -hmm. get our coffee and food and yeah, sit there yeah. and we would eat and drink our coffee and Aww. 
Then we would go to the Extreme Fun Center for the day. Um, then we would go to a movie. And a I'm movie. Not sure, I was just thinking that, yeah. I'm not sure if we would go to the big theater or if we'd go to the Beartooth in Anchorage, mm-hmm. which like is like dinner theater. dinner theater. And yeah, because uh-huh. we do love the Beartooth. Um, this is kind of funny, but our family, even we don't really even buy anything there. We just like to walk through Best Buy. It's like, oh, okay. Like when we go to the mall, like Mm -hmm. anytime that we go to the mall for anything, like Chili's Mm -hmm. is one of the kids' favorite restaurants. So we'll go to Chili's. And then Mm -hmm. they're like, can we go to Best Buy? And we don't even hardly ever buy anything. They like to window shop. Yeah. Yeah. Like my husband. That's how I feel in Office Max. Really? It's the same. Yeah. Yeah. The same kind of need that it feels. I don't know what it is, but I totally get it. Yeah. Or now my alternative plan is I would. Uh, well, see, I couldn't do it in one day. I was thinking I would fly to visit one of my family members, Aww. like either my Aww. in-laws or my dad and my stepmom. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, but I think that's what we would do probably. Like mm-hmm. going mm-hmm. out to eat, movie, and I, the Extreme Fun Center would be really fun. That's really fun. Because I can't picture doing stuff like the Extreme Fun Center for a very long time right now. Like, I don't know that that's going to be something where right. people are going to be prone. That'll be one of the going. last things I think to open back up. Yeah. Yeah. Where you're touching it's things. Totally not essential. And it's mm-hmm. big crowd. Same thing. There's a trampoline park that the kids like. Yeah. So my youngest, my little extrovert, he's like the day quarantine ends, we're going to go to extreme fun center and the trampoline park. Mm-hmm. I kind of don't think so, bud. <laughs> Not unless you're wearing a bubble. <laughs> yeah. No, I really think it's going to be more gradual than that. And yes. that's what we kind of had to explain to him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's All see. Right, my so free pass day, I'd want to go back to the gym and spend some time in the sauna and I would get myself a massage. So that's what I would do just Ooh. kind of for mommy time. <laughs> that sounds and good. Yeah. For the kids, um, the trampoline park probably, or maybe e- either that or Extreme Fun Center. Those are both really fun. We're uh, flexible. So we'll meet you at either place. Well, that works. That works. Or even like going bowling. It's not something our family does, but it kind of sounds fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. And then, yeah, like a dinner out somewhere and then really, I think I'd be peopled out by then and ready to just come home and watch some TV. Yeah, come back and <laughs> quarantine for another few weeks. You know, I was thinking like maybe we could even have people over because like we we have. Right, um, I thought of that too. Yeah, we do like the um, the meat where you buy like a, a whole bunch of bulk meat to just mm-hmm. fill your freezer. We do that like once a year. And so we have some kind of fancy cuts of meat and we always save them for like when people do come over. Mm-hmm. And so we're just kind of sitting on this like, like, I don't, I don't even know what it is. I'm not, I don't get into red meat like my husband is. We're like, we're, we're sitting on some fancy meat that we're just waiting for when we can have people over. But um, honestly, after a day of doing all of that, I, I probably would be ready to just come home <laughs> and chill. <laughs> I'll voluntarily social distance a few hours early. <laughs> yes. I'm, I think I might be with you. I, I'm, I'm pretty introverted too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you want to, I know we got to go soon. Do we have time? Do you want to do um, some of our devotion or do you want to just yeah. kind of, we'll jump back in. Okay. We'll do the devotion. Let's um, do it. All right. So our scripture is from Matthew six thirty one to 34. So do not worry saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear for the pagans run after all these things and your heavenly father knows that you need them, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own, Matthew 6, 31 to 34. Um, And we're going to be praying for financial burdens. Mm -hmm. Um, So, um, yeah, I mean, it's kind of following along with our prayers for the economy. This is more individual financial burdens. Kind of personal, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So um, let's pray. Let's do it. Lord, we praise you for being our strong tower of refuge from anything this world throws our way. When we remain in you, we are kept high and safe from the flood of financial ruin that covers the world. Even when we find ourselves facing financial uncertainty, you are there to provide for all of our needs. We confess that these uncertain times make us anxious, even afraid for what lies ahead. Thank you for seeing us, for caring about our struggles and needs, and for promising to get us through. Help us to take our needs and worries to you, placing them at your feet and watching as you work miracles to provide in ways we could never have imagined. 
We lift up each person struggling today with how to make ends meet. If they don't know you, we pray that you would use this time to drive them to Jesus. When they come to an end of themselves, allow them to see clearly where the true source of their help needs to come from. We pray that salvations would come from this economic crisis. We pray that you would mobilize the church to surround these people with financial, spiritual, and emotional support. Bring their needs to mind and pour out your resources to help sustain every person, and in doing so, showing the love of Jesus to each one. We ask that you would move legislators and leaders to pass bills to help ease the burden of the COVID-19 crisis on business owners and employees alike. Give them heavenly wisdom to come up with solutions that will aid those who need it most. In Jesus' powerful name, amen. Amen. You know, and maybe something to add on to that. I was listening to a show yesterday. It was recorded like a year ago, but it was about just homelessness in America. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it just, some of the numbers are so discouraging. I know Anchorage is having a big problem, like, you know, especially right now, what do you do with people who are in the homeless camps? And then what do you do, Mm -hmm. you know, I, I don't know, has Alaska officially, um, I know some states, like, you can't get evicted. Do you know if Alaska has done that? I think we have. I don't know okay. if it's on the state level or on the okay. national level, but you can. But, I mean, re- regardless, you though, you know, it's, it's, it's a hard time financially for a lot of people, and especially for people, you know, in transition or not having a stable place to stay. I think that's an important area to focus our prayers as well. It is. That's actually tomorrow. The homeless. Oh, sorry. Spoiler. <laughs> that was a good segue. It's like, it's almost as if I had prepared you for that. <laughs> Oops. Here I am like trying to, and you know, Jamie, you forgot to mention the homeless. <laughs> actually, I just happen to have it next. <laughs> we get to spend a whole day. Well, I'm, I'm off, awfully glad that we get to focus on that because I think that is for sure an important kind of piece of this puzzle to remember in our prayers. Yes, definitely. Awesome. Well, thank you. It's always fun getting together. Yeah, you have a good day. You too. We'll talk to you soon.